trees to the sport? Well, I, I came to New York in the 70s to visit, and I worked out with my brother, and he hit me. I thought he had killed my whole family. I returned to the Carolinas, and when I came back to keep me out the streets, he took me to boxing. Ooh. And it was my determined to hit him as hard as he hit me, and I told the coach that when I hit him as hard as he hit me, I'm done. I, I don't think I ever got him back or not, but uh, I was tightening up on him, and he was tightening up on me, and you know, so I don't know really who got whom. Would you, if you had to guess, how many times you think you sparred with Eddie over the course of your life? Uh, I don't even think I can come up with a number because it was myself, him, Frankie White, and my uncle Willie, and the four of us were light heavyweight that person Jackson, so we worked every day. You know, we only got outside work after it was close to a fight. Then we went outside the gym. But outside that, we just worked in the gym. I'd explain who your brother was to you. Edward Davis, he was everything to me. He was older than I were, and he, you know, took me to the journey that I went on. Tell me about Percy Jackson Youth Center. Is JoJo Moore was the trainer? JoJo was the trainer, head trainer there. Well, it was very important to us. Uh, we got there early, so we played a lot of checkers, and, and then... What he would do was get in the ring with us. He was an older man. He got in the ring with us, and he would hit you. I thought he would kill everybody, you know. But, you know, he was like about 147 pounds, give or take. And uh, that expired me because I wanted to get somebody like he got me. So I stuck with the sport for a long time. How big of an influence did you think JoJo had on your life? Everything. I mean, he got me into it, and then I wanted to quit when I got hit. And he always said, a quitter never wins. You know, he said, you, you know, you got the tools to be great, but you got to stick at it. It's hard work. You know, being a country boy, hard work was easy. And the thing about JoJo Moore is if you wanted to be a fighter, you was going to put in the work. Because he always said that I won't be in your corner for you to make me look bad. And I take that to where I'm at today with the kids that I train. You know, if you're not ready for it, this is not the place to be. And, you know, he was my, my trainer, my brother trainer, and my uncle trainer, and he got us all on the right track. And we only separated from JoJo when it, we all became contenders, and it was difficult to be in three places at one time, and we was all light heavyweights. So eventually I got a new manager, and then we, you know, I started working out in the city. The first thing that you learn coming from the South, you don't want to rush into anything because you want I, me. I like to be right, and uh, I wasn't going to do anything that I have any business to make it wrong. Because my dad always says it's easy to get in trouble, but it's hard to get out. Right. I went to an all-black school, and when I came to New York to visit, everybody was mixing and bowling alleys together and bowling everything. So it was a whole lot different. A lot I had to learn about being in New York. You know, it was like everybody was human and that's just the way it was. Yeah. You know, so everybody got along well. How many times did you win the gloves? Twice. 75 and 76. Now, I've heard the story, you beat Cooney or Eddie beat Cooney. Classroom. Well, his first year in the Golden Gloves, Cooney won the middleweight. His second year in the Golden Gloves, my brother beat him. His third year in the gloves, I beat him. And he, then he went heavyweight and... Uh, we live happily ever, happily ever after that. <laughs> if you win the Golden Gloves, it was like being the world champion. Because back in those days, I don't know if they do it now, now, if you were the champion open class, you represented. Right. So Russia brought all heavyweight team to America, and they couldn't make 11 heavyweights, and we couldn't make 11 heavyweights, so they threw some of the light heavyweights in there to have that big event. What's your favorite place, or the memory that sticks out the most? England sticks out the most because uh, that was the first trip. And I had never been out of America. I don't even think I had been on a plane at that time. I think my first flight were to London. And uh, I saw a whole different world. And we also, we had lunch with the Queen. Once we went abroad with the team that we had, because Cooney went with us and I had fought him the year before. We was like family, you know. It was just everybody was, you the USA team, there it was. And that's what we done. We just ran it out of weight. Nobody got left behind, and we made everybody get up to run and work out time. It's just what we done. 
You know, it was like a big family, just like most of the guys in, in the other pro sports that once you get together and you're not fighting a guy, you know, everybody's tight. We did get lost in London. We did get lost, but we found our way back to the, to the hotel. You had to go as a big group though, right? Well, we all went. We took the whole team and we ran around a big park. We didn't quite make it back. We had to get some direction. Yeah. But that was the fun part of the trip because uh, it wasn't just me by myself. It was the whole New York USA team. Yeah. How often did it happen where you guys almost fought each other? Because I know they don't let relatives. Well, fight. they don't. They don't make you in the amateur. They make teammates fight. My uncle and I was co-champion in seventy seventy six. Okay. Yeah, we was co-champion in the Golden Gloves in seventy six. He won the seventy five novice. I won the seventy five open. He won the seventy. We was co-champion in seventy six. Okay. We watched out for each other, yeah. you know, because we figured the three of us, one of us had to make it to the top. Right. Did JoJo have to separate you guys? Plenty of times. Yeah. I mean, it was it, normally we get in the ring and they stand on the outside and coach, but when we got in, the three of us got in the ring with each other, he got in the ring. And I'm going, why are you in here? Because I know y'all want to act the food. And it was just more or less like, if you hit me, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just like kids growing up. That yeah. had to make you better, though. That had to well, I, I think it made the three of us, the four of us, who we are. You know, because first of all, you couldn't get beat because they're going to talk about you. And, they, and you know, back in the days, we could do a lot of hollering at the, at the events. And they would come all the way down our stadium and get next to the ring. And, you know, you let that punk beat you and all kind of things like that. And, you know, you were forced to fight. Yeah, yeah. You were really forced to fight. So, you know, it got hooked in my head then, you know, because I had a big mouth. And it got hooked in my head then. Well, I might as well go out and get it on. Yeah. Because the guy going to beat you if you don't do anything about it. Talk about fighting Leon in the Olympic trials. Well, you know, it's a big thing because if you make it to the Olympics and win a gold medal, you're the man in America. And we had six gold medal, no, five gold and a bronze medal. Leon and Michael was two of them. And it was just felt in my head that I made it because I made it to the, to the finals. You know, if I'd have beat him, I'd have went to the Olympics and he would have came home. But uh, they gave him the decision. He didn't knock nobody out. They gave him the decision, and he went on. And, uh, you know, great things happened for those guys. My career wasn't bad, but, you know, in America, if you ain't first, you're last. The decision was fair in the Olympic trials? Well, it was close. And I couldn't say who won and who lost it, but I know I didn't get blown out. In the, and uh, a lot of people in the audience were saying that he didn't win it. But then, uh, you know, what is it going to do? We go by the judges. I fought Leon three times in the Amazon. I lost three decisions to him. Okay. Because okay. I fought him in the Nationals in 75, and then I fought him in the uh, Trials in 76, and they have a final box off. Mm -hmm. If you lose in the finals, then you have a final box off. He was already the number one guy. Yeah. You know, Mike was already the number one guy. Raylan was the number one guy, and everybody walked around like they was high stuff. Yeah. You know, so with me, hey, you may be number one guy. Now, here comes Johnny Davis. You know, and like I said, we fought three times, and it was all three split decisions. Left hook, right cross, both delivered by Johnny Davis. Davis comes back with another left hand. Well, right now, Davis is doing what I said he had to do. He's using that marvelous left jab and hit that. Willie Taylor. Really Ooh, Jesus. Tough, like hitting a brick wall. Yeah, talk about Willie Taylor. Well, when I fought him, because it, it was ideal for me because he's a short guy. Yeah. And I'm a dancer. So I know what's going to happen here. And the bell rang. We came out, and we got it on. One, two, three, boom, boom. I'm slugging him, he's slugging me. I go, hey, boy, this ain't, this ain't your fight. But when you're fighting a guy like Willie, you're fighting for your life. Yeah, yeah. So you can't sit back. Because if you do, you're going to get beat. He, he, came, he came in low like Joe Fraser, and, and he just, he kept coming. Early on, you fight Dwight Braxton, or who later became Dwight Muhammad Kawi. Yes. You beat him. I gave him his first loss. He started yapping, and then I'm a yapper. So... He said nobody could come in there and beat him. So, you know, he pushed the wrong fella. So I go up there and I get him and I smoke him in there. I fought him in a rematch before he became world champion. I lost a split decision to him. Yeah. I won the first one. And he won the next two. I think personally we've done the same thing both times. You know, I'm going to do what I do. He, I don't think he got off anymore. I watched it on videos and uh, I thought it could have been anybody fight. You know, nobody got knocked down. Nobody got busted up. We just wore it out because then he became the champion and all of that. So, you know, if anything close, it's going that way.
When top rank call me and ask me would I fight Yaka Lopez, if you fight Yaka and you beat Yaka, you get a title shot. Going into the fight, you know, the whole thing was about, you know, fighting Yaka and this happened and it happened. And then the interview named and they said, well, he fought some great guys, but none of them was Johnny Davis. Well, how do you feel? Same way I feel about anybody else. I'm going to win. And when I said I fought for my life, that was one that I did. And I mean, the war started from bell one. And when I hit him with that overhand right in the second round and he went down, I went to the corner with my hands up. He ain't going to get up. I turned around. He was up laughing. I go, oh, Lord, here we go. So we get back at it, and I dropped him in the fourth round. I go, I know he's done. I turn around. When I get to the neutral corner, he's up laughing. I'm okay. I'm okay. I said, oh, Lord. And we warred for the rest of the fight. Yeah. It went 10 rounds. Yeah. And that fight put me in the, uh, in the rankings. He's coming at you, you know. He's coming at you, and he's one of them guys that you can't get tired. You get tired, you're in a whole lot of trouble. You make a Yaka Lopez, you know. You're in the business. You have to be ready to go when you're fighting for the title. I mean, because if you make it and win the title, you're the kid on the block. It was a hell of a fight, touch and go, until I got hit with an elbow and got cut. You know, and then eventually, you know, I took about 15 or 20 stitches over the left eye, and eventually the referee stopped it. He was the champ, so what, what can I say? Yeah. Not only was he the champ and he won a gold medal, then he won the heavyweight. What can I say that would make him look bad? Right. It would make myself look bad if I said something negative about a record like that. Right. What did you think of your brother Eddie's fight against Michael Spinks? I thought he won it. Yeah. I thought Eddie won the fight. Most people say he's the closest anyone, any light heavyweight came to beating him. Yeah. Yeah. I think just because of who he was, he got the decision. Right. When you decided to walk away, were you at peace with it or were you... Well, I had never got hurt. Right. You know, I got cut with Sphinx, but when I, to me that wasn't hurt. My last fight, right. and I cracked my eye socket. Okay. And I don't remember what round it was. I go down on a knee, and uh, after they stopped that, I was going to get up. But when I got up, I couldn't see. Okay. And then I, 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 I'm not going to get hurt. And then when the, the commentator said, we know we're going to see you again, I laughed. No, you won't. Yeah. They said, you're not going to fight again? I said, well, I stayed in a long time. And I said, if I ever got hurt, I quit. Right. That's the day I walked away. Boxing is one sport you don't play. Right. If you box every day, somebody get banged up every day. And when you're training for a fight, if you're in a training camp, four to six weeks, you box practically every day. And they don't bring guys in. Most of the guys they bring in is similar to the guy you're fighting. But they come in to work you out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and plus, when I'm working out, I have my brother and my uncle working with me. And, uh, you know, you ain't got no easy day. Yeah. And I, I try to inform the, uh, you know, to the kids I work out with, I train now that, you know, if you want to be good, you got to put in the work. No, no, there's, you know, you don't play boxing. You play basketball, football, but you don't play boxing. Boxing is for real. I love working with the kids. Uh, it's one thing I learned is like your first grade school teacher. Regardless of where it's class, where schools you end up in, you always gonna remember who. Yeah. First grade school. So if these kids go on to become Golden Glove champions, Olympic champions, and world champions, I can remember their first coach. Yeah. Yeah. Now obviously, I remember my first coach just like it was yesterday. Yeah. I remember my first grade teacher just like it was yesterday. Well, Jojo always told me, he says, uh, I don't know what you want to be, but if you work hard at it, you can be anything you want to be. And I'm going because when I first got into boxing, if you hit Johnny Davis, you know, there's some problems. I don't want this. You know, but they talked me into it, and uh, I've done it. I've done it a long time, and I thank him to the day because of the things that happened to me in my life, the places that I've been, and the people that I met. Right. You know, that is. You can't pay for it. Work it out. Work it out. Give the second John both ends. Steal around. Steal around. Just like steal around.